So what we're going to do is a little bit of SolidWorks 3D modeling here, a little bit of what we like to call a live solve. And what this means is that we're going to take a look at this 2D print, and we're going to try and solve the answer to this challenge live, live right here, right now for all of you using SolidWorks. What is the mass of these three plates in kilograms? Now, this is kind of a cool, fun model because there's a there's you know there's not only a few ways to solve the model itself but there's also a few ways to solve the the question right the question is what is the total mass of these three plates in kilograms so how do you come up with that total mass do you make an assembly you can make an assembly and add one two three but then that would mean you have to model all three of them do you do it with configurations do you just make one calculate the mass type it somewhere and then modify the model and then type the mass in like like type it into calculator plus then model the second one type it into calculator plus then model the third one type it into calculator enter and now you have the total mass in kilograms there's a lot of different ways you can come up with the answer as well and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and i'm going to model it using solidworks i'm going to model it using configurations because it'll give us a good chance to look at what are called configuration tables and that's something that you actually need when you take the cswp you have to know about configuration tables Tables. It's something that comes up when you take the CSWP. They're going to ask you a question specifically on creating and managing configuration tables. Yup, that's me in the chat says, model the fat one and scale down. Unfortunately, it's not scale. It's only these two dimensions here that are changing. These are the only dimensions that change. 18 and 210. Nothing else changes. So everything else is staying the same. Only those two dimensions are changing. What is the total mass of these three plates in kilograms? Yeah. So anytime we're modeling up a part in 3D from a 2D drawing, the first thing we need to do is think to ourselves, what's the first sketch going to be? What is the first? Uh, Blue Byte Systems fixed it. Nice. What is the first sketch going to be? What is the first? Um, where is the origin going to be located? So we're going to go through, we're going to model this thing up in SolidWorks as a live solve. And here we see what that 2D print looks like. And whenever you're going from a 2D print into a 3D model, one of the first things you have to determine is where will my origin be and where will the first sketch be located. And so in the case of this model, it's tempting to say that the origin is going to be right here in the center. And I think I would pretty much agree with that. Whenever you have a round part, that's, you know, that's pretty much where the origin is going to be. But it's tempting to say that my first sketch is going to be this sketch here, this revolve, maybe that sketch and this sketch here, and then I'll do the inside and then I'll do the spokes. And that certainly is an option, but I think a smarter option, and this was the option uh, that we saw some of our tournament runners doing in the tournament, a smarter option is to create a center line here at the origin and then to create this shape as your first sketch and so that's what we're going to do we're going to create this shape here as our first sketch and we're going to use that to revolve into this overall plate and then we'll do a cut extrude for one of these like triangular shapes to remove that material and then we'll do a circular pattern of that cut extrude to pattern that spoke around and then from there we can find out the answer what is the total mass of these three plates in x.xxkg and you can see here that when it comes to these three plates the only dimensions that are changing are these dimensions here. The remaining dimensions on the model are staying the same. So let's take a screen capture of that. Go new here, do a screen capture. I'm going to take that screen capture and just move it over to my second monitor. And then I'm going to uh, change my layout here so you guys can see some of my keyboard shortcuts as we're going through and modeling this. And we're going to model this up in SolidWorks. I'm going to be using SolidWorks 2020 here because I like it and I think it's good. So now we're going to do a new part here. The part is going to be using millimeters, MMGS, and it's going to be using plain carbon steel as the material. So you can see that I've got a template here for MMGS and plain carbon steel. Always good to have templates uh, to help you save time, save repeat work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my right plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and then I'm going to choose to create a center line here right at the origin. And so that gives me my kind of starting point for this overall design. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just create uh, a part of the design like maybe I'll create a line that comes down like this and then a line that comes over then I'll hit escape and I'll press the S key and I'm going to go to my smart dimension command on the S key menu pick that center line pick this line down here and then choose to make this a doubled dimension so you see how as I cross over that center line it becomes a doubled dimension so we're going to double that over to the other side and then we're going to type in the value 210210 and that kind of helps me to make sure that I've got some kind of a sense of proportion now this line here 
here that's going up is actually going to end up being a mirror line. So what I'll do with that line going up is I'll just kind of, you know, I'll drop it wherever I can drop it up here. But then I'll click on that line and I'll choose to make that for construction. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line that comes up in this direction. Looks like that line is going to uh, come into a distance of 18 enter going to create a line that comes here at 45 degrees create a line that goes this way create a line that comes back up this way at 45 degrees and then i'm going to create a final line that goes in this direction and this final line is going to go into our id of 50. so kind of close off that sketch hit escape and now i've got all this geometry right here with that center line and i can just take that geometry window select it uh, window selected here or you know you can do a, a window select or a crossing select either one then I can choose mirror entities and I can just quickly mirror that geometry right across now it's just a matter of adding a few dimensions like this dimension here to the ID again cross over that center line that's going to be at 50 and uh, this dimension uh, to the uh, uh, from from uh, this line here to this line here, the overall width of the plate, that's going to be 18, at least for this first version. Then the distance from this line to this line here is going to be four. And the distance from this line here to this line here is also going to be four. Of course, we could also make those lines collinear. The angle here is going to be 45. And it looks like I picked up on a perpendicular relationship. So I could skip this extra angle dimension here. Although if I do put it in, SolidWorks will just automatically make it driven for me because I set that setting the first time it asked me if I wanted to make it driven. So now I'm going to create the final dimension here, which is a dimension from this point to the center line, cross over the center line, and that's a dimension of 75 millimeters. And now I've got a nice fully defined sketch there, all the geometry I need for that revolve. Since this sketch has multiple center lines, it's got a center line here and it's got a center line here. I'm going to remember to pre-select this center line and then I'll choose features revolve. And that way SolidWorks knows which center line I want to use. If you only have one center line, SolidWorks automatically puts it in that box. If you have multiples, then what you can do is you can pre-select that center line. So we hit the green check mark and there we go. There's our first feature. And that's really the majority of this part. Now, all I need to do is just get that cut extrude in there. So I'll choose maybe the front plane, begin a sketch, orient my view. I'll take this, this edge here, since that's kind of the outside most edge of that cut extrude, and I will choose to do a convert entities, convert entities there. So now that's a circle that's traced right over that edge, a circle in the current sketch. And then what I'll do is I'll create a line here that comes from that circle. It's going to kind of come down here at an angle, come back, touch the end point, go into a radius, single click, come off of that with a tangency relationship. Let's see, where's tangency? It's uh, this one or this one? this one tangency relationship and drop that onto that line there as well nope that wasn't tangent so i'll just pick on this point here and then i'll choose to make those tangent i don't want these two lines to be perpendicular you can see solidworks gave me perpendicular there i don't want that so i'm going to click on that line i'm going to press delete and then um, a little trick that you can do here is you could take this point hold control pick this point here let go of control you can make those vertical and so you can see that when we did that, it kind of got this close to being symmetric, but it's not quite symmetric yet. So now what I could do is I could take this line, hold control, take this line here, let go of control, make those equal. And now you can see that that thing is behaving symmetrically. So certainly you could go in and you could create a symmetric relationship. But a lot of times, if you just make these two lines equal, if you make the center point vertical, that's kind of like a quick way of enforcing natural geometric symmetry. So that means that all I need to do now is just create this geometry here, the angle dimension, which that angle is 60 typical. And I need to create this dimension here, the radius, and that radius is 20. And then finally, I need to create a dimension here from tangency to tangency and that's going to be done by holding shift on your keyboard so i hold shift on my keyboard pick this arc pick this arc here okay let go of shift single click to drop the dimension and that's going to be a distance of eight millimeters eight millimeters and now i can either trim this sketch or i could just leave it completely closed how it is you know overlapping like a bad sketch if i leave it as a bad sketch i can press s key extrude cut and then i can come down here to contour selection and choose that contour then i can right mouse button in the background and say through all in both directions and then right mouse button again that gives me one instance of that thing and now i could choose to create a circular pattern for the circular pattern direction i could choose this outer edge for the circular pattern feature to 
pattern, I could choose this face here of the cut extrude, and I could just bump this number up here to five instances of that cut extrude. And there we go. There's one instance of that plate. So now I'm going to save this because I am going to put this into an assembly. I'll call it plates. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to create multiple configurations of this plate. Now, in the old days, the, ways that, the way that we created configurations was we would go over here to the configuration tree and we would right mouse button on this uh, the name of the part here and we would say add configurations. And we would add one here called medium. And then what we would do is we would double click on the plate. We would double click on the dimension we want to change. So I want to change this 210 dimension. So I'll double click on it. And then we would say we want to change that dimension for this configuration only. But in modern builds of SolidWorks, you don't have to do that. It's much easier to manage your configurations. And the way that we do that is we manage our configurations using what's called a configuration table. And so the way we access that configuration table is we double click on the part, we right mouse button on this dimension, and then we choose configure dimension. And what this does is it automatically brings up this table here where we can on the fly create new configurations. Now, one thing that's that's worth noting about this is this is some functionality you're going to need to know when you get into your CSWP prep class. The CSWP prep class definitely has a section on creating these configuration tables. It's when we get into part two here of configurations. It's chapter four in the uh, in the actual uh, training class, but it's part two of the CSWP exam. You have to get into working with configurations and making changes and understanding how to manage configurations. So this will this will definitely be helpful. And if you're trying to get prepped for your CSWP, if this is something that you've been struggling with, pay attention here because this is definitely going to help you when you go to do your CSWP. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my configurations. I currently have one configuration here called default. I'm going to double click on the model. And when I double click on the model, I'm going to see that the dimensions from the revolve show up. I'm going to right mouse button on this dimension here, and I'm going to choose configure dimension, configure dimension. And once I choose to configure dimension, I'm going to type in here configuration name 210, and I'm going to press enter. And you'll notice that over here in the tree, a new configuration was just created. So all I did was type in here 210, press enter, and now a new configuration has been created in my SolidWorks configuration tree. Pretty cool, right? So I could come over here, I could type in uh, 270, enter, and I could type in 330, and I can press enter. And we can see here that in the column header, the name of the dimension is D1. Well, what I could do with that name of the dimension there is I could right click on that name of the dimension where it says D1, and I could choose rename, and I could call that plate diameter, plate diameter. Now, if I choose enter, and then I just choose OK here in this uh, property manager, in this uh, uh, configuration table manager. What I'll notice is that now if I double click on the plate and then I click on this 210, you'll notice that over here where it says primary value, the name of that dimension has changed. So when you're working in the configuration table, it's like a, a bi-directional um, driving tool. You're driving the creation of new configurations. You're driving the names of sketch dimensions and of feature names in your uh, in your model. And that can be really helpful just to kind of like organize a project. Like there's a lot of dimensions here in sketch one. I don't want to have to be dealing with D1, D2, D3, things like that. I want to know right away what those dimensions are called. Now, one way we can do that is we could, we could uh, click on that dimension ahead of time and then come over here and I could call this um, plate width. And certainly that's going to be helpful as well, because when I go to add that dimension to the table, it's going to give me that name. But another way that we can do that is we can get into the configuration manager, the, the configuration table. And the way you do that is you right mouse button on a dimension and you say configure dimension. And then here's the table. And then right here at the top of the tree, you can right mouse button and choose rename as well. Pretty cool stuff. If you guys like that, hit the like button. It definitely will help you. You can also see here that what we can do is we can choose uh, another dimension. So I can double click on this dimension here. That adds that dimension to the table as well. So now I've got my three configurations, 210, 270, and 330. And then I've got these parameters here, the parameters for plate diameter and plate width, which I can change for each of those configurations. So I could change this dimension here to 270, enter, change this one to 330. Maybe I could use my arrow keys to navigate through here. So this one is gonna change to 30, enter, and this one is gonna change 
to 48 enter and I really don't need the default configuration anymore so I could go over here double click on 210 and then I could just delete that default configuration I really don't need that config anymore and so when I'm done you can see here that now I've got 210 270 330 I didn't have to access Microsoft Excel at all. I'm doing this all right in the built-in tools in SolidWorks. I'm able to quickly go through and change those configurations. And so now what I could do is I could choose to create a new assembly, new assembly. Uh, we'll just go here and choose our assembly template. And then what I could do is in the assembly, I could just press the R key on my keyboard, R, recently accessed documents, and I can drag and drop this plate in from my recently accessed documents. So I'm going to bring this into the configuration 210. I'm going to hold control and drag a face of this part, make a copy of it, hold control and drag a face of this part, make a copy of it. I'm going to click on this, this copy, come up here and change that one to 270, enter. I'm going to click on this one here. I'm going to choose to change that one to 330 and hit the green check mark or press enter. And then finally, I'm going to go into my options and in my options, I'm going to go into my document properties units. I'm going to say custom and that way I can change my mass here to kilograms. Now, of course, there's easier ways to get to that uh, mass and everything, but this is just one way of going through and solving this model. This is why I really like this model because there's really several ways you could kind of get to the answer, but one of those ways would be to use configurations. And here you can see how that works using the configurator table. Let's go into our evaluate command mass properties, and we can see that we are coming up with a mass of 25.31 kilograms. And let's see, did we get it correct? 25.31 kilograms we did it we got it correct so gg to toby we did it we got it correct and that is how you would solve that model and if you guys enjoyed that one if you enjoyed it be sure to hit the like button leave me a comment down below let me know what you thought about that live solve and of course if you're interested in the cswp prep training class visit us tutaltobycom slash training we can get you all signed up for that cswp training class it's all online it's all pre-recorded videos you can take it on your own time and within one weekend you could take and pass your cswp like our former students have so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. And uh, with that, let's move on now and talk about the uh, the second answer here that we came up with. Aaron C in the chat saying, much to you,